How does a government target an elusive militant leader? In the case of al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Zawahiri, killed by the U.S. government over the weekend, it's through careful, patient and persistent work by counterterrorism and intelligence agencies, according to a senior administration official. Zawahiri's death, the biggest blow to al-Qaeda since the U.S. killed its founder Osama bin Laden in 2011, came after he had been in hiding for years, rumored to have been in Pakistan's tribal area or inside Afghanistan. Speaking on condition of anonymity, the official laid out the details, starting with how the U.S. government had been aware of a network that supported Zwahiri. Over the past year, following the U.S.'s withdrawal from Afghanistan, officials had been watching for indications of al-Qaeda's presence in the country. This year, they confirmed that Swahiri's family, his wife, his daughter, and her children, had relocated to a safe house in Kabul. Zwahiri was later identified at the same location. Once at the safe house, Zwahiri stayed put and was identified multiple times on the balcony of the house. By April, President Joe Biden was briefed by National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. On July 1st, after weeks of meetings, the president and his top advisors, including CIA Director William Burns, convened in the White House Situation Room, where Biden was presented with a plan to take out Zwahiri. Senior interagency lawyers confirmed that Zwahiri was a lawful target based on his continuing leadership of al-Qaeda. On July 25th, Biden was given a final briefing. The president then authorized a precise, tailored airstrike on the condition that it minimized the risk of civilian casualties. The strike was carried out at 9.48 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or 1.48 GMT, on July 30th by a drone firing so-called Hellfire missiles, striking Zwahiri where he had often been spotted, on the balcony of his safe house.